Let's solve question 3.20 part A from the Incropera textbook. It is a fire-related question that deals with firefighters' jackets. It is a really important question because it concerns a real-life problem, therefore every engineer should be able to solve it. Now, as with every heat transfer question, we start with two simple yet fundamental steps. The first one consists of writing and listing all the assumptions that we're going to employ to solve the problem. So the first one in this case is steady-state conduction as you may have already understood. The second one is 1D conduction. This is, actually, this is actually not obvious at first, but we are actually considering the firefighter's jacket as a simple plain wall. Therefore, we can simplify the problem as a 1D scenario. The third one is the most important one. Heat transfer modes through the air gaps are only conduction and radiation. This is essential, and I'm gonna highlight, highlight this because it's actually gonna be crucial for later on, as you will have the opportunity to understand. Finally, the last assumption is that uh, materials are isotropic, so their properties do not change depending on, depending on temperature. So having said that, we can now go on to the second important step, which is redrawing the scenario, uh, just to understand what we're dealing with better. I've already done that before starting the recording, as you can see here, I redrew the firefighter's jacket and I labeled with two dashed lines the solid parts and with two squiggly lines the air gaps. Now, let's understand what task A asks us to do. Task A consists of visualizing the scenario, as you can see, and transforming the system described in the exercise in an equivalent thermal circuit. Before doing so, though, it is essential to remember that the exercise asks to account for the thermal resistances of both conduction and radiation. And here we go again, that's why I, I highlighted the assumption I listed before. Now, this of course concerns only the two air gaps of the system, as it is reasonable to assume that the solid parts, the shell, the moisture barrier and the thermal liner, exert resistance only against conduction. Now, having said that, let's see how we can simplify the system and transform it into a thermal circuit. We have a first resistance exerted by the shell. Then pay attention to this. We have two parallel resistances exerted by the first air gap, another single resistance. We have the same for the other air gap. So again, a two, a parallel configuration and finally another resistance. Now, you will ask yourself, what is this parallel configuration I drew here? Indeed, it is not common to find parallel configurations in heat transfer in general. So here I drew R conduction and R radiation for the air gaps in parallel. Let me explain you why. This is a crucial step, so please pay attention. And if you don't understand this, please have a look at example 3.1. It could be useful to make your ideas clearer. Now, it is crucial to bear in mind that the resistances of the two air gaps regard different mode of heat transfer. One is radiation and one is conduction. Therefore, adding the two resistances as if they were in series would be wrong because they actually, they're, they're not related to the same thing. However, we can all agree that they co do contribute towards the total resistance of the system. That's why it's correct to label them in parallel. Therefore, our ultimate goal now is to understand how to calculate our total of each gap. And in other words, transform this parallel branch into a single simple resistance which we can add to the other ones in series. I think now you will start spotting the patterns we have uh, we are having with the mechatronics course. Indeed we're actually going to use the laws of mechatronics to help us with this with this problem. Let's now let's now start assessing all the resistances of the system. Let's start with the resistances exerted against conduction. We know that they can be considered to be L, where L is the characteristic length of, our, of each layer, over K, where K is the conductivity. Now remember that we are dealing with meter squared Kelvin over watts, and it is actually specified in the question as, of, as I have allotted here. The resistance against radiation instead is not as obvious. Indeed, R against radiation is equal to 1 over H rad. What, what is this H rad? Yeah, this H rad may not be obvious at, at the beginning, but we are actually lucky because it's given to us in the, in the question. Indeed, the question provides us with a, uh, an expression to simplify this H rad. 
which can be considered to be four sigma t average cubed, where sigma is the Stefan Boltzmann constant and t average, I'm actually gonna switch color right now. T average is given to us in the question and it's equal to 470 Kelvin. Let's find the last expression that is gonna allow us to tabulate all the results of this problem. So we know from mechatronics that one over our total gap is equal to one over our conduction plus one over our radiation as they are in parallel. Now, as you may have understood, this is gonna allow us to have such a circuit with five simple resistances in series, which can be simply added to find a total resistance of the system. Now, bear in mind, this R total gap actually corresponds to the to this and this resistance. Uh, of course, they're, they're the same. They're exactly the same because the two air gaps have the same properties. Now, there is one last intermediary step we need to do before actually building the table with all the results we need and plugging in the values in the expressions that I just showed you. Indeed, we have all the properties of all layers apart from the air gaps. Now, we can extract the conductivity of the air at T average is equal to 470 Kelvin from the Incorporate textbook and find that K air is equal to 0 0.0387 watts over a meter Kelvin. Having said that, we now have all the datums we need to actually build this table that I'm showing you right now. This table contains all the results that you should get if you have followed the right steps and right procedure. And of course, this, uh, this one that I highlighted is the, actually the total resistance of the system. Now, before leading to part B, I would like to spend a minute on commenting on some of the thermal resistances you see here. The most protective layers, as you can see, of the firefighter's clothing are the moisture barrier, whose thermal resistance is almost three times larger than the one of the shell in the small layer gaps, and the liner. One other important thing you should note is that the resistance against radiation exerted by the air gaps is actually significant. This is really important because it, it again entails that radiation, especially when we're dealing with fire and wildfires, cannot be neglected. It actually plays a fundamental role. Therefore, it is really important to include it when we carry out our analysis. Let's now solve Question 3.20, part B. In this part of the question, we are given a specific heat flux at the other surface of the firefighter's jacket. And we're also given the inner temperature experienced by the firefighter. Now, our aim in this part is actually to find the outer surface temperature of the whole system. As you can see here, before starting the recording, I drew this a simplified version of the system and actually I represented it by a single thermal resistance. Indeed, uh, I could do that just because we had calculated it in the previous part, in part A, and we have found it, we also found its value of 0 0.1043 meters squared Kelvin over watts. Now, as we are dealing with resistances, you know that we can write Q dash dash is equal to TO minus TI over R dash dash total. Therefore, as you can imagine, by rearranging, TO is equal to Q dash dash R total plus TI, which is equal to, by just substituting numbers, our numbers in, 0 0.25 times 10 at the fourth watts over meter squared times 0 0.1043 meter squared Kelvin over watts plus 66 degrees. If you have these numbers, you should get the right answer, which is 3 to 7 degrees. Now, before actually closing the video, I would like to make a parenthesis on this. If someone doesn't understand this, this is just a conversion from cent centimeters squared, which we have here, to meters squared. It is worth commenting on the results we just obtained. Indeed, what does this 3 to 7 degrees actually mean? Well, it entails that the firefighter's jacket serves its purpose. Why am I saying that? Well, as a starting point, 3 to 7 degrees is actually a high temperature. 
So we've just proven that the firefighter's jacket protects the firefighter from a high temperature. Now we have looked at a problem which deals with a steady state scenario. You have to understand that this is an ideal slash imaginary case. Indeed, firefighters will never be exposed to fire for a really prolonged period of time. They will stay in the fire for a shorter peri period of time. Therefore, the analysis we should have conducted to represent reality at, the, at our best would have been of a transient nature. But this is what you will discover in each transfer in the next few chapters. So, if we consider the transient nature of reality of a firefighter's jacket, we can deduce that actually this, this jacket can protect firefighters from even higher temperatures, as they will stay in the fire for just a few minutes, if not seconds. Therefore, the clothing works really well.